Hey guys, welcome back to Mind State, where we help you reach your full potential. In today's video, we will be discussing how to start a self-care routine that benefits your health and well-being. If you've ever been told you're taking too much time for yourself, you know how frustrating it can be. And if you've ever been told that self-care is synonymous with being selfish or indulgent, well, that's just not true. It's actually kind of the opposite. When you take care of yourself, you're doing everything in your power to make sure that you can do all the things you need to do and want to accomplish in a day. So the next time someone tells you that taking time for yourself is bad, remember this. Self-care is a necessity, not a luxury. If all this stock of self-care is making you a little bit of an outlier, take heart. You're not alone. There are plenty of people who have never heard the term, or who don't know what it means or why they should care. But here's the thing. Self-care is an important part of taking care of yourself and being your best self. In fact, it can be argued that if you don't take care of yourself first before taking care of everyone else, then you may find yourself overwhelmed by stress tiredness, and illness. And those things can make it harder for you to do all the things for other people that are so important to them. Here are some tips on how to start a self-care routine that benefits your health and well-being. Number 1. Discover what soothes your soul, recharges your batteries, and makes you feel whole. If you're feeling exhausted and burned out, it might be time to take a break from your usual activities. It's easy to get caught up in the idea that you should work all the time, but it's not true. If you're always working, then you're probably not taking care of yourself. And that's bad for your health, your happiness, and your job performance. You know what they say, all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. We think your work is great, but we also think you could use a break. You spend so much time at the office that sometimes it's impossible to get away from it. But even if you can't take a vacation, there are ways to take a break from work without actually leaving your desk, and we're here to help. Instead of just working harder, try taking some time off from work. You can even use this as a chance to learn new skills or read books outside of your usual interest area. You'll be surprised by how much more refreshed you feel after a short break from work. Number 2. Take the first step by choosing a new habit you'd like to pick up in the next 7 days. If you're looking to make a change, start small. One of the most common problems with self-care is that it seems like you have to do so much in order to make a difference. But the truth is, it's all about making a few small changes that are sustainable and manageable and then letting those little shifts add up over time. So this week, try taking care of yourself in one very simple way. You got this! One of the best parts about self-care is that it's not a one-size-fits-all proposition. You get to choose what works for you, and there are so many different options out there. So pick one behavior that you'd like to incorporate into your routine as part of your self-care routine this week. It could be something like eating fruit before bed or taking 10 minutes for yourself when you get home from work. The possibilities are endless. Then follow through. This is your chance to take back control of your health and happiness by making sure that you're taking care of yourself on a regular basis. You won't regret it, and neither will anyone else around you. Number 3. Begin practicing that behavior every day for one week. Self-care is a funny thing. We all know we should do it, but when we take a minute to think about it, it can be pretty difficult to figure out what actually constitutes self-care. For some people, Taking a bubble bath or going for a walk might be the most relaxing thing in the world. For others, meditating or doing yoga might be their way of unwinding after a long day. But whatever you choose to do when you practice self-care, the important thing is that it feels good and helps you relax. So, why not make self-care part of your daily routine? Try choosing one new habit each week that you'd like to adopt as part of your self-care routine and then practicing it every day for one week as a form of self-care. The great thing about this approach is that if something doesn't work out quite right, you don't have to feel like you failed because there's always next week. Are you liking the video so far? Before we get back, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel, and click on the notification bell to get notified of our new uploads. 
Now let's get right back to it. Number four, reflect on your emotional state. Sometimes it's hard to keep up with the self-care routine you know you should be following. It's easy to let things slide and neglect your body or mind. But if you want to feel your best, it's important to reflect on your emotional state as you incorporate the new habits for your self-care routine. The key is finding ways to stay in touch with what's going on inside of you. When something isn't feeling right, pay attention. Asking yourself questions like, what am I feeling? Or what do I need? Can help you pinpoint the problem so that it can be addressed appropriately. You can also talk to friends and family members about how you're feeling. They might be able to provide insight into what's going on with you and help offer solutions for your situation. Sometimes we forget about our bodies because we're so focused on other things, like worker relationships. But taking care of yourself is essential for living an optimal life. So don't forget about yourself. Number five, when you are ready, try adding some other practices. You've been doing it for years. You've got it down to a science. You know what works for you, and you know how to make the time for yourself. You're the master of your own schedule, and you've got it all figured out. But then something happens. You get busy, and then another thing happens. It gets harder to make time for yourself. And another thing happens. You start feeling like your self-care routine isn't working as well anymore because you're so busy. What do you do? Do you just throw in the towel? No, you keep going but maybe not exactly how you were doing things before. You know what they say about doing things the same way over and over again, expecting different results. So when you're ready, add in new habits in your self-care routine so that your old standby becomes even better than ever before. Number six, seek support from loved ones, a coach, a licensed professional like a therapist or dietitian, and or your healthcare plan. You've got support. You've got people who love you, who want to help you, and who can help you figure out what works best for your body. Maybe it's a coach, maybe it's a dietitian, or maybe it's your therapist. But whatever the case, you've got someone in your corner who wants to see you succeed. If you're feeling overwhelmed by a problem, like your eating disorder, it's important to reach out to someone close to you and talk about how you're feeling. If it feels safe, Consider telling them about your eating disorder and how much it's affecting your life. Make sure that person is someone who cares about you and will listen closely and not judge what they hear. If this isn't an option, that's okay. You don't have to tell anyone unless it feels safe for you. You can also reach out online through anonymous chat rooms, Facebook groups, or message boards. Just make sure that people on those sites are trustworthy before sharing any sensitive information with them. Hi everyone! Thanks so much for watching Mind State. If you found this video helpful and enjoyed watching our content, please click like and subscribe. We'll always provide excellent takes on anything and everything. And also, we'd love to know about your thoughts, so leave a comment below. See you next time!